welcome to my channel. I'm Angela. I'm a graphic designer and an illustrator and today I figured we would do something a little bit different. We are going to create a website landing page. The way we're going to do this is we're going to be in Photoshop on the iPad. By the way, I found my glove. I lost it for a while, which is why I didn't wear it, but I found it. I'm going to show you how to make different selections in Photoshop while creating a web page. A little something different, but I think you guys will find it fascinating. There are a lot of different types of selections you can make in Photoshop. So let's dive in. I have Photoshop open right here, and this is one of the important parts of designing anything, is what type of artboard you're going to use. I am on the create new screen here for a new document. Generally, when you open this up, you are defaulted to the recent section, but those are just ones that you've already done previously, the artboards you've already chosen. However, there's ones for print that are already set up for you so that we don't have to guess on size and everything else. And then there's also screen. I'm going to choose screen because we're creating a web page. For some reason, the resolution is defaulted to 72. Do not move ahead with the 72 DPI. It's going to be very pixelated. You want 300. Trust me, it's the best. So 300 it is right here under resolution. You just tap in there, type, and then there you go. I'm choosing web large because we want it to fill up the entire screen. We don't want any margins on the sides. I'm going to press create. Here's our artboard. You get defaulted to the point selection tool, just the selection tool here in Photoshop. It's a point selection tool in Illustrator. So we're starting with our base here. Now imagining this is the entire front of a web page. There's going to be a toolbar or taskbar, and then there's also going to be the landing page itself with some information and a logo. But some of our things are probably not going to be exactly how we want them to be, so we're going to make some selections. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to this page, page, I call it a page icon. It's basically an import icon over here on the left toolbar, right between the eyedropper tool and the text tool. Go into my photos. You can choose whatever file you want. If you have files saved on your Creative Cloud, use those. If you have photos that you've taken that you really love, use those. Whatever you like. It's your web page that you're making. So I'm going to go into my photos because I have a photo I want to choose, and it's this one. Now this is not in the right orientation, so I'm going to expand this, and I'm going to take out this section right here. I don't want that there, so I'm going to press done because we're done importing it. The first thing I'm going to do is remove this. One selection you can make since we are making a horizontal web page and this is going to take up the entire page pretty much. Uh, you can go into the third icon over here that is defaulted to the lasso tool. If you tap on it another time after it's already selected and highlighted in blue, you get a whole bunch of different types of selection tools. Now, the lasso tool is one type of selection tool. However, you don't always need it. Sometimes it's a little bit tricky to get the lasso tool to work very specifically to what you want. So we're going to use the marquee rectangle tool. Mind you, this is only one selection type. If we just want to cut off the bottom, you just drag the marquee rectangle tool over the bottom. A submenu pops up right here. Just tap erase in the submenu and it's gone. Now this only works well if you have certain photographs that you just want to chop the bottom off of. However, I don't really want to chop the bottom off of this. You can always just undo. I'm going to deselect. The other selection you can use, you can do a quick selection tool, drag it over. I literally just tap and dragged it over this knee area. And we can even zoom in to see how refined our edges are, and they are not. So let's tap refine edges. In the view mode, you can change the view mode. If you want to overlay so you can see better, you can change that. You can do it on black, which for this photo it's really hard to see, but if you have a really light photo, you can do that and then on white so you can see where the edging is and what it looks like. So I'm going to keep it on white just so it makes it easier for me to see. Then I'm going to do edge detection radius. So I want the edge detection radius to be zero because the more you choose, look how pixelated and grainy it gets. Not very ideal. So I'm going to keep it down to zero. Smart radius, let's turn that on. And then smooth. I want to bump up the smoothness because I don't want all these jagged edges. So I'm going to bump up the smoothness till, smoothness till it looks about good, about to 37%. Then 
The feathering I don't want. Shift edge brings it in. If you go down to the negatives, pushes it out. If you go up into the positives, I'm going to push it out ever so slightly so we get the full range of that edge. As you go down, there's other selections here. If you want to invert, you can, but since I want to select this, I'm not going to. I'm going to press done, erase, the knee is gone. So you're probably wondering, wait, you now have this massive empty space here. That's just nothing. Well, you're right. What we can do next, let me deselect this. We can go ahead into the spot healing brush on our left toolbar. I'm gonna to make sure the brush is pretty big, probably about 87. And I'm just gonna draw over a section and it's going to pull information from the surrounding area, kind of almost like a content aware fill to be able to fill this area and the knee is gone. So let's move ahead into this web page design here. Since this photo is not horizontally orientated, let's make it horizontal. So I'm gonna choose the second tool on the right on the left toolbar, and that is going to give me transform options. Now transform options, this one's scale and rotate, so I'm just going to scale it. Now the whole web page is filled with this photograph. This is very intense. It is a campfire, however, you don't want it to be too loud. So I'm gonna create a new layer by tapping on this plus icon in the layers panel over here. This is the condensed layers panel. The real layers panel is the second icon on the right toolbar. So you can work with either one. However, I like the condensed version because it stays out of your way more. New layer on top. In order to make a full overlay, I'm gonna choose my color over here. I'm gonna make it black, choose my paint bucket tool, and just tap the screen. Now, I know in my previous video that I created in Photoshop, I used the square marquee or rectangular marquee tool to then select and then put a color in the background. However, you can just paint bucket, much simpler, but there's two ways to do it. Go back to our selection tool, go into the properties panel, change the blend mode from normal to overlay. There it is. And then we can bring the opacity of this down quite a bit I'm gonna say about 33%. There we go. And this is with it, without, this just makes it deeper. Now, if you wanted to make this a little bit more, less of an intense color, we could go into the properties panel. Instead of overlay, we can do hard light. Hard light looks pretty good. It does dull it down quite a bit. So let's do a hard light. You can see the difference between that. It just dulls it down a bit, so that way it reduces the harsh lighting that's coming from the photograph, which is exactly what we want. I'm gonna create a new layer, and we're gonna create a top task bar for like all your menus and such like that. Choose that selection tool. You tap on it twice to choose a different one. I'm gonna go back to that marquee rectangle tool. The marquee rectangular tool is really good for this, especially when you want to make a perfect selection like so. Just drag across. So I'm going to take the color selector, make it white, paint bucket, tap in there while it's still selected, and then deselect. So now we have a top taskbar, and we also have our base for our web page. Moving right along, I want to put in some text, and I also want to put in a logo. So let's go into our import option over here. Now, I have two forms of this logo, and this is a logo I created. It's very simple. Get this into place. So I'm gonna downsize it quite a bit, and tap done, selection tool, and I'm gonna move it into place over here. There's the yellow one. I may not use this yellow one, so let's import the other one that I created. Again, downsize it constrained, Press done. I may use the yellow one later, we'll see. I may even just wanna put it in the center, to be honest. So this is the start. Now, if I wanted to go into this logo, and for instance, this white box that we created, if I take that away, there's still a selection here that is visible. If I don't want this white selection in here, there's two ways we can go about it. I zoomed in pretty far. Go into our selection tool, 
we can use the quick selection tool and tap in. However, it's very unrefined. It gives us a lot of excess area here that we don't want and it doesn't really cover everything that we want to select. This is an instance where you want to use the lasso tool. The lasso tool is the first one. It's usually the default. So with this one, you want to use your drawing skills. I'm going to draw along this line and trace the line here. Now, if I made a mistake, let's say if I wasn't so careful, when I missed some pixels over here, there are other selections in this pop-up menu over here that's attached to the lasso tool. The basic one is your selection. The one that has two pages means you add on to the selection. So I'm going to add on by selecting that and it adds to your already selected selection. Erase the inside of that. Don't forget to deselect. For some reason, whenever you use the lasso tool, there's always pixels left behind. So you can choose the magic wand tool and it will choose whatever pixels are close at hand and you just erase them. If you over select, for instance, if I had selected this area and accidentally selected the black right here that I didn't want to select, there is another option for you. You don't have to deselect and reselect all over again. You see this third option over here in this pop-up submenu? You choose that, draw over the area you didn't want to select, and it takes the selection of that away. So that way you can refine this as much as possible. Now that we have this, we're going to create some text on here. Let's go on to the top layer, which is our logo. By the way, since we're messing with layers, if you don't have your items, for instance, like your photographs and your logos and stuff named already, you can always go into the full layers panel, tap on the name, you double tap on it and you can name your layers. I don't think I've really covered that before. So this is going to be our taskbar. This is going to be our overlay. And then that's just the background. Layer one is always the background. We already know that. Let's go into our condensed layers panel. I'm going to create a new layer and then we're going to add some text. We'll do our rule of thirds. Add another text layer. Photoshop is smart. Whenever you put down a text layer and you go to put down another one, it takes what you've already had as far as your selections for your text typeface and your sizing and your color option and it duplicates it into the next text layer. So very intuitive. I'm going to go back to our logo layer and I'm just going to add three bars. Whenever you have a task menu or anything like that, you're going to want to have a submenu selection somewhere. We're going to use our marquee rectangle selection tool and we're going to do something very similar that we did before. I'm going to make this, uh, let's make it gray. I'm going to make my selection very thin. Paint bucket, tap in it, deselect. The great thing about this is that you can tap on the layer that this is now on and you can duplicate it. Let's just make sure it's the right size. That is way too long. So let's go ahead and transform our selection. I'm going to hold down my touch selector and then just pull a corner in to make it shorter. Done. That's pretty good. It is a little bit too high. There we go. Tap on the layer, duplicate it, move it down. I will go back and make sure that these are all in line with each other. Tap on this layer to merge layers together. You can go in here and just merge down, tap on the layer, the three dots, merge down, and then it makes it as one unit, which makes things so much simpler and so much easier. And now you have the basis of a web page. If you didn't want the top taskbar to be white, if you want it to be a different color, let's say like orange or yellow, then we can do that as well. Let's go back to that layer. If you can never figure out what layer is which on this condensed layers panel, definitely go into the full layers panel. That way you can see which ones are which. Let me go ahead and name these while I'm at it. So we're going to go back to our taskbar layer and we can change the color. Now since it's on its own layer, you can just take the paint bucket tool, tap on it, and it can make its own color choice here. When it comes to color selections, that gets a little bit more tricky in Photoshop. It's this eyedropper tool. 
you can use to select anywhere within the image, pull any color. I kind of want a darker color. Let's do this dark burnt orange. Paint bucket, that taskbar layer is still selected. Tap on it. That looks kind of cool. What do you guys think? So this is a good start to the basis of our website design. You can definitely change up some things. For instance, if you wanted like a um, text box container, you can do a text box container. You can change up the color of your text as well. For instance, I will choose my text layer here, go into the properties panel, and instead of white, we can make it yellow, let's make it brighter. Make it nice and bright and yellow so that way it makes sense with the fire. And then you have something that looks like this. You can also go in and make any other tweaks you would like to. For instance, the logo here, if you didn't want it to be black, if you actually wanted it to be yellow, we can hide the black one and we can have the yellow one there so that way it's a little bit more cohesive. So this is just the beginning of designing a web landing page. You can definitely be a lot more strategic and a lot more precise with this. That's the basics of the different types of selections in Photoshop between the lasso tool, the quick selection tool, the marquee rectangular tool, and the magic wand. You also have the marquee ellipse tool, but I didn't have any ellipses to select in this one, so I did not use that one this time. Don't forget, you also have your regular selection, your addition, your subtraction, but there's loads of different things you can do in here as far as selections go. These were just five that we went over, and I hope you all enjoyed learning a little bit more about Photoshop and its selections, and I will see you all in the next video. See you soon, creatives.